Let's get one off the board because we know what one well, is. Well, we know one is going to be there that red and black G. Hunker down, clean old-fashioned hate coming this weekend against an overmatched Georgia Tech team. And it's like a 35-point spread. Dogs are going to go to the SEC championship game undefeated for the first time. For the first time they've gotten there with a perfect record. At number wow. two. That's oh, what we expected. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt, did you expect? I expected this. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I, yeah, I just think that they've been trending in a really good direction. Their defense, guys, since yep. those first three games, only given up, th only given up an average of 15 points a game over the last like seven or eight games. So I think it's it's become a more complete team. Their offense is terrifying. When they're clicking, uh, it, it's an exciting offense, and everybody keeps talking about it. The Ohio State offense against the Georgia defense would be must-see TV if we're lucky enough to potentially get that in the championship. A lot of, lot of football to be played until then, but that's uh, not shocked there at two this week. There are a couple of pass rushers who reside in Ann Arbor, Michigan, who would like to derail those plans <laughs> come Saturday uh, yep. just after 12 yep. o'clock Eastern time. Just behind the Buckeyes at number three, yep. Alabama slips a spot, Joey. Alabama has played more close games than they're accustomed to playing, but with the exception of the A&M game, they found ways to win. But Ohio State surged past them now. Yeah, this is not a surprise. Uh, watching what Ohio State did against number seven in the country, uh, you know, that offense is absolutely amazing. And I think Kirk's right. I think more impressive than what they did on offense was the fact that they held Kenneth Walker the third to 26 yards rushing. And that was the question mark about this football team. And the only reason that they haven't been a consistent team this season is because on the defensive side. So now the defense playing the way it is, they look like a number two team in the country. And Alabama, once again, is offensively as good as anyone in the country. But they're giving up way more points and way more plays than we're used to seeing that defense give up. Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, not much of a surprise. One, Here we two, go. three. Here we and go. Now at number four, every week when Cincinnati moves up a notch, they set a record for the highest ranked team outside one of the Power Five conferences. Of course, they are headed to the Big 12 in the future. But at the moment, they are in the American. What we don't know, the Bearcats move up. Number four. And they do. Oh! How about that? History has been made. Cincinnati at the moment is sitting with the last spot. Alabama and Georgia still have to play. So you got a good spot for well, Cincinnati. First, first thing, they took care of business. They, they look dominant against SMU. We, we've been waiting for this, right? We've been waiting for them to put it all together. So they handled that. Now you look at your ranking, it's hard not to go look at the possibilities. They're going to play each other. Michigan's behind me, I know now. Michigan plays Ohio State. There's a lot of things for Cincinnati to look at and be happy about. Yeah, there are, and even in the scenario where Alabama beats Georgia and both yep, go. I agree. There's there's still I a agree. spot. There's still a spot in there for Cincinnati because Ohio State and Michigan play this weekend. Yep. One of them going to be knocked off course. Number five. Yep. Michigan. So Michigan is number five and that leaves at number six. Fighting Irish of Notre Dame only a game against Stanford which is having a a poor season right now. Irish expected to go into the clubhouse at 11 and 1. Hope that things fall their way uh, to make the playoff uh, once again. So, Joey, what do you what do you think here? Any kind of big surprises to you? Is this uh, is this going to appease more of the masses than the previous rankings have? Uh, I think so. Not a surprise. And and I think that teams like Oregon getting smashed uh, helps out the committee. Uh, Wake Forest moving back helps out the committee. I think the only thing that gets interesting now moving forward is let's say Cincinnati handles their business of uh, the Alabama Georgia thing plays out. Does Oklahoma State have a path? Let's say they they beat Oklahoma uh, pretty good, you know, in, this weekend. And then let's say they get Baylor, which again is a top 10 team. So Oklahoma State could add two yep. top 10 wins to their resume to finish things, this thing off. And that would make this an interesting conversation for the committee moving forward if they can pull that off and be impressive while doing it. Yeah, Joey, I, I think the, um, the biggest thing that we've learned tonight is that Cincinnati with two games left, and especially next week with Houston. We just talked about how Houston is – is gaining momentum and playing with confidence and a dangerous team. I think the committee will very, really respect that game if Cincinnati is able to win it. I think Cincinnati is, is in a really good spot to, to win their next two, regardless of what happens around them, and I think they'll be in. You know, I, I think it's, de, it's just debatable about whether they get up to three 
or if they stay at four, no matter what happens. So that, that's, that's big that they're at four now. I thought maybe you might see them have to continue to wait until they beat Houston in the final week of the year if they do win that game. But, uh, David, I, I think this is great news for Luke Fickle and the Bearcats. Now they just got to hold serve, and, and they got to keep winning games. Which is obviously easier said than done. So you think even if Oklahoma State runs the table, Alabama beats Georgia, Ohio State wins out, you think under that scenario Cincinnati's still in? Yeah, give me that scenario again. You threw a lot o at o me there. <laughs> Alabama beats. Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma State beats Baylor. They're a Big, Ten, a Big 12 champion. Mm -hmm. Alabama beats Ohio yep. State – or beats Georgia, excuse me. They're an SEC champion. Ohio State wins the Big Ten with one loss. Where is Cincinnati then? I, I, I would put Alabama at one. I would put Ohio State, if you're saying they won out, yeah. I would put them at two. Ge Georgia would be at three. And the debate, as you would know, would be Cincinnati – and a Big 12 champion, Oklahoma State. And I think the unbeaten record and the way they finished against SMU and potentially Houston, I think Cincinnati would go in at number four. And you still have a little, I mean, things could change because of those level of wins that David's referring to if Oklahoma State or Oklahoma, for that matter, were able to get them. But right now, there's, there's a little bit of a gap between them. There's, you know, Cincinnati is in the top four, Oklahoma State seven, Oklahoma's ten. So at this moment, up to this point in the season, the committee has a higher regard I got where you. Cincinnati but you, is. But you play, you play those teams right there. I mean, you play two top ten it's, teams in the next two weeks. It's going to that close. That gap's going to close quickly. It will close. It will close. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.